Good morning, and welcome to Church Street United Methodist Church. I'm Palmer Cantler, a pastor here at Church Street. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, and Advent means arrival. Of course, we know we are waiting for the arrival of Christ. Advent is the beginning of the liturgical year for us as Christians. We are glad that you have decided to worship with us today as we begin to celebrate the season. Each year, members of, of the Church Street family share wonderful daily devotions for you, our community, to read and reflect on throughout Advent. If you would like to request a devotional booklet, please contact our church office using the information on your screen. Share your name and your mailing address, and we will be glad to send you send one of these to you while supplies last. We also share these daily devotions with our community by email and on social media. So if you would like to receive those in your email each morning this season or on Facebook, you can sign up or find us using the information on your screen. We have a few Advent studies beginning this week, and you can find more information about those and how to join by going to our website and clicking on the Education tab of the menu. Let us open our hearts and minds as we prepare to worship Almighty God together.
Hear these words from Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 3. Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. Though darkness covers the earth and gloom the nations, the Lord will shine upon you. God's glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your dawning radiance. This first week of Advent, we remember the gift of hope that we have in Christ. The prophets of Israel all spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of David. They spoke of how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the hope you give us. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming by being open to seeing the light of Christ in others. We ask this in the name of the one born in Bethlehem, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Will you join me this morning in our prayer for illumination? Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us in the waiting, the watching, the hoping, the longing, the sorrow, the sighing, the rejoicing. Speak to us by your word in these Advent days and walk with us into the day of your coming. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. Hear now the word of the Lord. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is to come coming upon the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaking. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. 
As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Here we are at the beginning of the church year. Happy Advent! Advent, when we look forward to the coming of Christ. And here we are at the end of Luke's gospel. Not quite the end, but just before the verse that says the religious authorities were looking for a way to kill Jesus. And just before the Passover meal, before Peter's promises and Judas's betraying, before the arrest, the trial, the crucifixion, Happy Advent. We are reminded every first Sunday of Advent of church tense. No, not tense for camping, but verb tense, church tense, past, present, future. In the Christian year, there is the fluidity of time, past, present, future, all tied up together. Stories and lessons from the past and hope for the future define how we are in the present. In this scripture, we hear echoes from the past. Jesus sounds a lot like as Isaiah as he talks about the heavens being shaken and the earth in distress. We hear echoes of Daniel as Jesus describes the Son of Man, and we can remember the apocalyptic protector from Daniel's story. Jesus in our scripture today is standing just outside the temple, present tense, and says when these things begin to take place, nodding to the future tense, when these things begin to take place, but aren't these things he's talking about already happening? Roman government wielding its power, the Jerusalem temple is on the brink of being destroyed, it has been by the time Luke writes his gospel, impending doom and clashes of power. When these things begin to take place, aren't these things already taking place now? Our earth is in distress. We just recently heard reports from Glasgow at the climate change conference, which made us ask, is it too late to save our planet? Natural disasters of flooding and forest fires and droughts no longer seem natural, but just normal. Is it too late? People in power used to be held accountable for those rare instances of vitriol, but now dehumanizing statements are not only tolerated, but encouraged. One congressional reporter said this week, that the number of politicians who receive death threats from constituents is becoming almost commonplace. Jesus says, when these things begin to take place, but we know they're already taking place. Studies are proving that black and brown children are treated differently from white children in schools. We've seen that white people can defend themselves without punishment, but men of color are deemed reckless and violent when they plead self-defense. We just saw Wisconsin town's Christmas parade turn from laughter and cheers to screams and tears because of violence. When you see these things begin to happen, happy Advent? When I see these things happening, 
I want to turn away. I want to crouch down and hide. But Jesus says, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Drawing near that future tense just over the horizon. My redemption later is affected by my behavior now. As we prepare to kneel down to welcome baby Jesus, the first Sunday of Advent reminds us that we will one day stand before the Son of Man. How will I welcome that Jesus? The present tense Jesus is telling me as I look to the future, I must now lift my head up, pay attention, be on guard. It is tempting to feel horribly guilty and want to hide from this Jesus, or at least explain to him that there is too much distress, there are too many signs, there is too much violence and too much hatred. I cannot do anything about it. But happy Advent, this Sunday is when we stand in the present and know that the resurrection, the victory over death, the fullest expression of God's reign has already happened and that Christ the King is ruler of the earth and all that is in it. The day of our redemption is drawing near and the day of our redemption has already happened. So today, I can raise my head and sing, this is my Father's world. Oh, let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is God's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is king, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. If you are a Lord of the Rings fan, or at least familiar with those stories, you'll remember the scene in the two towers when Frodo is ready to give up. He and his friends have been through so much, have seen so much darkness and violence, and at this point they are at a crossroads, and I won't spoil any of the story, but Frodo is tired and says he cannot go on. What's the point? Well, you don't have to be a Lord of the Rings fan to understand that sentiment or to understand cynicism or apathy or just exhaustion. Frodo says to his friend, I can't do this, Sam. And Sam says, I know, it's all wrong. By rights, we shouldn't even be here, but we are. It's like in the great stories, Mr. Frodo, the ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were, and sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come, and when the sun shines, it will shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something, even if you were too small to understand why. But I think, Mr. Frodo, I do understand. I know. Folk in those stories had lots of chances of turning back, only they didn't, because they were holding on to something. And Frodo asks him, what are, what are we holding on to, Sam? And he replies, that there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Christians would say that it has already been fought for and the victory won. That is what we are holding on to, Sam. Happy Advent. So when we see these things happening, these things amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing, as Martin Luther would put it. We do not say, well, things are probably going to get a lot worse, or what can you do, or why is there so much evil in the world, or what's wrong with people today? Instead of that, we stand up straight. We look around. We are on guard. We are paying attention, and we give a victory shout by saying, Happy Advent! We pay attention and call out what is wrong. 
Happy Advent. We stand firm in a future while purposefully and intentionally working to live into God's kingdom on earth. Regardless of your political party or what groups you align with on issues, it is never Christian to talk about, uh, to use dehumanizing language to talk about anyone else. We pay attention. We speak up and call that out. We keep learning about how to pay attention. I've been reading a book whose title is Required. The longer title is God's Call to Justice, Mercy, and Humility to Overcome Racial Division. The authors are Mac Peer and Claude Alexander. One is African American and the other white. One is a, a minister and the other a Christian business leader. These are two men who have been paying attention and who have been in dialogue with each other and speaking up and more importantly, helping people hear. As I read the book, it helped me remember uh, as I went through school integration as a youth many years ago, we were taught then that we are all equal, black people and white people. We are all the same. It was the polite thing, the right thing, even the Christian thing to say, I am colorblind. I don't see color. Fortunately, some folks have spoken up, paid attention, and said, no, what you are saying to someone of color when you say I'm colorblind is, I don't see you. I don't see the trials you have to go through. I do not acknowledge that our experiences are different. I do not admit that I have never had any questions about my character or motivation or worth based on the color of my skin. We learned it was polite not to ask about the wheelchair. Don't look at the man with the crutches. Just smile, be polite, act like we're all the same. But no, we pay attention. We are attentive. And we know the way to do kingdom work is to say, good morning. I would like to hear what it has been like for you to maneuver through our building in your wheelchair or with your seeing eye dog. We pay attention. We raise our heads and ask questions and get involved. Just because there has not been any gun violence in your neighborhood, it doesn't mean that you still can't work with the community around you to say that when a drive-by shooting happens anywhere, that it pierces your heart. We pay attention we tell others what God's kingdom will look like. Because our future is certain in Jesus Christ, we continue to proclaim what redemption drawing near looks like. A word that gets overused and maybe watered down is mindfulness. I love that word. But this time of year, it can become a cozy and comfy word. Mindfulness for me, in early December usually involves a peppermint latte while I am alone in my car. I'm being mindful. Or making sausage balls for my children who are coming home after Christmas. I'm being mindful as I pay attention. Yes, that is good at this time of the year, so enjoy your mindfulness. But Luke jars us just a bit this first Sunday of Advent and says, hey, pay attention, pay attention, snap out of it. Look around, see what is happening. Look at your world. Look around you and do not get drunk on peppermint lattes. And do not overindulge in gift buying. And do not become cynical and, and worn down. Pay attention. Your redemption is drawing near. Respond, and respond with raised heads and confident voices that proclaim the Christ who comes in the manger is the same Christ who comes to redeem and save and heal and lift up a broken world. As Sam said to Frodo, there are stories of people who made choices to hold on to something. We are called 
to be a part of the story of redemption. And we hold on to the hope of Christ, the Christ who came into the world, the Christ who is with us, and the Christ who will come again. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray together. Gracious Lord, open our eyes that we may see what you set before us. You are the one who was and is and is to come. We come this day searching for hope. Remove from our hearts any anxiety and help us to look towards your coming with anticipation and joy. Even as weariness overtakes us, send your spirit to refresh us. We pray for all those whose burdens weigh heavy upon them, for the sick, the lonely, the forgotten, the abused, the grieving, and those in any sort of trouble. On this first Sunday of Advent, help us to see hope. Our world is in need of hope. May the pain and suffering of all peoples be seen and recognized by you, O Lord. Guide us in this season of Advent so we might prepare our hearts for the love of Christ, prepare our bodies for service in the name of Christ and prepare our church to receive the hope of our coming Lord and to proclaim his love in all things. In this season of hope, we pray for our world and for its leaders. Give those who lead a creative spirit to make decisions for the good of all peoples. We pray for that day when Christ returns and his kingdom comes fully upon this earth. Our hearts long to be united with our God. This is the content of our hope and the witness of the gospel. Let us now join that prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as we go into a new week together, may we hold our heads up high and know full well the love and hope of Almighty God, the grace and hope of our Savior Jesus Christ, the communion, fellowship, and hope of the Holy Spirit, now and for always. Amen. Amen.